In this video, uh, I'm going to share the process I went through to, uh, to take a split shot, um, a raw file of a split shot I took on my Greenland trip, um, and using uh, Adobe Lightroom Classic CC and uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop, so the latest versions of both. Um, adjust the photo from um, one that's not really usable to, if not an award-winning photo, at least uh, a pretty decent one. Um, and it's actually a lot simpler than I than I thought. Uh, so looking at this photo, you'll see there's lots of issues. Um, above water, uh, it's it's very washed out, um, and and it's fairly dark below water. And and so this was a very difficult photo to take. Uh, it was a gray overcast day, um, but the sky was quite overall quite bright. Obviously the snow at the top of the iceberg is very bright. Um, and then we had the diver situated in between in an area that was uh, that we had a gap between this the sea ice kind of on the left and the iceberg on the right. I was lying on the sea ice shooting shooting off the sea ice. Um, and and so that area um, underneath the water, it was getting some light but not a whole lot. Um, it would be a lot brighter if we didn't have the sea ice um, off to the left. And so we're dealing with a very, very large uh, range, dynamic range here, um, as well as, yeah, difficult lighting conditions. So what's it going to take to fix this? Well, there's a few issues. Um, the first thing is uh, we want to brighten or, or rather darken this, um, this area above water so at least we can see the iceberg. So... Um, it's actually simpler than I expected to do this. We can use something called uh, a gradient filter. So we click here um, on, the, on the gradient filter option. And then I just uh, go to the middle of the photo. I select uh, the area um, that I want. And then I just I drag the filter down. And uh, let's just drag it to the bottom of this of the water layer at the top. And that's the area that we're going to darken. So. Nothing too fancy here, just need to change the exposure um, and let's say dropping it to about a yeah, minus 2.4 seems about right now. We can see we're getting some good details up here in the iceberg. Okay, so that's the first step. And uh, another thing I like to do, especially with, um, with kind of high range uh, photos, is I like to uh, knock the highlights down to get some more details out. Um, and then just bring up the whites um, until we're uh, edging up in the histogram about uh, about blowing out uh, blowing out the top end of the of what we have in the photo. So that's kind of my adjustments here: highlights down, whites up. Um, and now we've got an iceberg up here between the gradient filter and the, and the highlights adjustment. So the next thing um, is. I'd like this water to be a bit brighter, um, so I'm going to up the shadows. Um, that's probably too far. And what you'll see, there were a lot of particulates in the water, um, and so there's a, there's quite a bit of, um, of backscatter in this case. So um, that's okay. We'll, we'll work on that next. Um, but anyway, so I've increased the shadows. Uh, up to about plus 46 and then um, just to make sure that we don't lose too much contrast um, I, I knock the blacks down so that brings out the diver a bit more um, yeah so you can see now we've kind of we've brightened the water okay last thing um, I like to add some uh, some clarity and I'll sharpen the image up. And then um, there's also this function called dehaze, which recently came in, which seems to also um, sharpen something like this a little better. Okay, so now we're not looking too bad, but we still have this uh, backscatter issue, or not backscatter, there's no strobes used here, but just a particulate issue. Um, the rest of the photo actually looks pretty good at this point. Um, so what I'm gonna do uh, and it's very nice how it's integrated. I, I can just right click on the photo and, and go edit in Photoshop. <clears throat> and 
And, and as we open Photoshop, just a quick disclaimer, I'm no Photoshop expert. Um, I just, I use it for a few functions that I can't get in Lightroom, uh, typically to remove backscatter or particulates, um, and also to use content aware fill uh, to get rid, of, um, get rid of bubbles and get rid of other things that might be in, in the image. So uh, anyway, so we're opening the, the image in, in Photoshop. Um, this is just the way I do it. There might be easier ways, um, but this way works pretty well for me. So what I'm going to do, right click on the background, um, and I just duplicate the layer. I call this, uh, typically, uh, doesn't really matter, but Let's call this dust and scratches filter because that's what we're going to use. Um, okay, so now I've got this this new layer here, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply. I'm going to go to the filter option, go to noise, dust and scratches, um, and so what dust and scratches does is. Uh, Basically, you can set a radius and a threshold for the size of uh, dust or scratch, like the size of, of particle it will uh, filter out. Um, and it seems like it basically just smooths everything out. So um, in this case, uh, obviously we don't want to use this for the whole picture. Um, so it will, it will mess it up, as you can see here by the preview. Um, but what I'm looking to do is to smooth out this, this section of the water selectively. So anyway, this seems to work fine for this. Uh, 30 radius is pretty heavy for the dust and scratch, but in this case, because it's just a localized area with no real detail other than the color of the water, it'll work fine. So, um, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, so now it's applying the filter. Now the next thing to do um, is to go to the layer option, um, go to layer mask and hide all. And this is where we still have the dust and scratches uh, filter layer selected, okay? Layer mask, hide all. And now this layer is in the background. You can see that from the black uh, image here. So. Now, if we want to bring through uh, uh, the filter, then all we need to do is paint uh, white onto this black layer. And anywhere we paint it, it's going to bring the filter through. Okay. So um, normally, if I'm doing backscatter, you know, I will uh, I will use this very selectively so we don't lose too much other detail. But with the water, um, since we're just trying to get rid of it all, and there's there's really no detail behind it other than the color. Um, I'm just going to use a pretty heavy, uh, pretty large brush, um, and then uh, let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, and now we can we can work our way along the edges. And now I I want to be a bit careful. Um, because if we if we do apply this um, this filter to the edges, then um, it will blur them, which may look funny in the photo. So just kind of go all the way around. And, and while you're doing this process, if uh, if you realize that. Um, if it's not taking out some of the particles, uh, then then you may need to go back to the filter, um, the dust and scratches filter, and increase the radius uh, threshold. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, there's a few bits and pieces here. 
on the iceberg, that would be nice uh, to clean up as well. So I will shrink my uh, brush and then um, what you can see here, especially in front of the iceberg, is, uh, is it will actually blur, blur your photo a bit. Um, and that's a result of the, uh, of the pretty heavy usage of the, of the, of the radius on this. Um, but it's, uh, overall it will be fairly innocuous once you zoom out. Um, but you just need to be careful about how heavily, um, how heavily you use this. So, you know, in front of the diver, um, it's murky, but that was also an issue with, uh, kind of the freshwater layer on top of the, uh, that sits on top of the salt water um, around the, around the iceberg, and um, just going after this is going to end up blurring blurring out the diver. So I'm okay with with how this looks. The water's nice. Um, so let's take a look on the screen. Great. Um, so now I just uh, save it. So you can see here it's it's added on edit um, two and then it's a TIFF file. So now I can go back into Lightroom. Um, this is my original. Uh, once it loads up, sorry, this is the edited file, um, and this one's here is my is, is my basically with Lightroom edits before it's gone into Photoshop.